learning objectives. On completion of this course, you will be able to explain the meaning of contamination and cross-contamination, describe the various types of pharmaceutical contaminants, and identify the different modes and sources of contamination. Explain the concept of quality risk management and its role in contamination prevention. Explain the concept and application of FMEA tool in contamination prevention and identify the various prevention and contamination control strategies. Types of contamination. Now, let's learn about the different types of contamination present in the pharmaceutical cleanup environment. The clean room contaminants can be divided into three major categories, physical contaminants, chemical contaminants, and microbial or viable contaminants. A physical contaminant is anything that can be visibly seen and is not part of the product or raw material originally. Examples of physical contaminants include airborne, non-viable particulate contaminants and foreign materials such as metals, glass particles, and fibers, etc. A chemical contaminant is any unwanted chemical that makes a drug unfit for use. Examples of chemical contaminants include API of different drug products, intermediate excipients, intermediate chemical reagents, and cleaning agents. A microbial contaminant is any infectious material that affects the quality of the drug. Examples of microbial contaminants include bacteria, yeast, mold, fungi, virus, prions, protozoa, or their toxins and byproducts. It is important to note that the presence of microbes in drugs not only makes them hazardous from the infectious standpoint, but it also may change the physical, chemical, and the organoleptic properties of the drug after the contaminants alter the contaminants of active ingredients or convert them to toxic products. Sources of contamination. Personnel. Personnel who are supervising or performing drug manufacturing or control can be a potential source of microbial contamination and a vector for other contaminants. The main reasons for contamination from the personnel include lack of training, direct contact between the operator's hands and starting materials, primary packaging materials, and intermediate or bulk product, inadequate personnel cleanliness, access of unauthorized personnel into production, storage, and product control areas, inadequate gowning and personnel protective equipment, and malpractices like eating food, drinking beverages, or using tobacco in the storage and processing areas. Cleaning and Disinfection Part 2 the personnel performing the cleaning activity should be trained in all the relevant cleaning procedures. All unnecessary equipment should be removed from the facility or manufacturing areas. Cleaning procedures must be appropriately designed, taking into consideration the product formulation, the equipment design, and functionality of the system. Science and risk-based cleaning limits should be established. Disposable and dedicated product contact parts should be encouraged. Written procedures should be established for cleaning of equipment to assist operators to clean each type of equipment in an effective manner. The cleaning procedure should be validated to ensure its effectiveness. Now it's time to take the final assessment. This assessment will consist of 10 multiple choice questions. You will have three attempts to pass this assessment. To pass this assessment, you will need a score of 80% or above. A certificate of successful completion will be issued if you pass the assessment. Best of luck and keep learning!